All right, welcome to part two of our two-part series on transformations. Last time we did uh, the additive transformations. This time we're going to do multiplicative, and these are called dilations. So last time we were doing translations where we slid it up, down, left, right. Now we're going to dilate things, which means to enlarge or compress them. So same thing, we're either going to make it grow or make it shrink. We're going to do it vertically or horizontally here. And these are non-rigid transformations. That means we're not going to be congruent. The image is going to be different than the pre-image if we go ahead and enlarge or compress it. Awesome. So let's go ahead and start dilating right here. So the first one, let's do it vertically. Uh, so when I re when I look at this function right here, it looks like I'm going to take all the y values and double them. So let's go ahead and double those y values. Um, so we're going to change it vertically. So this one is at 3. So if he's at 3 and I double it, he's going to end up here at 6. So I'm going to draw these bad boys here. He's, and again, it's all the kind of points of interest. So I'm going to try to draw this by hitting the main points. He's at 0, so he's going to stay at 0. If you double 0, you're still 0. This guy's at 2, double in the y direction goes to 4. And if we do this last one, he is at 0, so he stays at 0. So now we're going to kind of connect the dots. I hope this is not too rough. Something like this. And you see how it got stretched vertically there. So ideally, that's not terrible. It could be worse. So I doubled all the y values, so it stretched it vertically. So we say this dilated by a factor. We could say something like the dilation by a scale factor of 2. So we use n or k or something to show how it dilated. Can we shrink it? Can we compress it? Sure. Let's check it out. I'm going to half all my y values. So vertically speaking, this is 3. So I'm going to go to 1 and a half. 0. I love 0 because he stays at 0. What's half of 2? He'll shrink down to 1. And then this point here stays at 0. So now I've just kind of compressed this. I've smushed him down in the y direction. And he looks like this. He kind of got squished down like that. Awesome. So we can enlarge. And this would be a scale factor of 1 half. So we dilated with a factor of 1 half. Awesome. What else can we do here? Let's do it horizontally. So again, now I'm messing inside this, um, inside the parentheses. So this is like the input. This is in the x direction. And again, when I see that, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going to double it. You're not going to double it. Remember, everything is opposite of what you would think. Just like plus means go left and negative means go right. When I do this, this is actually a factor of a half. So I'm going to half it in the horizontal direction, on the x-axis. So this guy's chilling out here at 4. He's at negative 4. I'm going to half him. He'll squeeze in here to negative 2. This guy was at negative 2. He'll get cut in half to 1. This guy's at 0, so I'll keep him at 0. This guy out here was at 2. Cut him in half. So see how I'm compressing, like I'm squishing him from both sides? Whoosh, draw this little bad boy in here. So we smushed him. We did a horizontal compression, or we say we dilated by a factor of a half horizontally. Excellent. So again, just be careful. When it's in the parentheses, it's always opposite. So sometimes I write down the scale factor just so I know I know what I'm doing. So half of this means you're going to double it, So all, and I'm going to do it in the horizontal direction. So negative 4 here will go all the way out to negative 8. Negative 2 in the x direction will turn to negative 4. 0 stays 0. 2 goes to 4. And see how I'm stretching this bad boy out? It's the same shape, but womp, he gets really stretched out. Imagine pulling both ends of that function, stretching it out like that. That would be a horizontal stretch dilation of two. Woo, I love it. I love it. All right, how about this last one? So can we have some reflection? Sure, we have a reflection. So I threw that in there. You can have a negative in there. It's just in the horizontal direction. So this means we're going to reflect it. The only difference is it's with our input. So it's with our horizontal. It's with our x's. So let me write horizontal. That's a horizontal reflection. So again, we're going to flip the points over the x-axis. So it gets kind of weird. So he was at negative 3. Let's flip him. He'll turn into positive 3. Oh, man. Negative 1 here will come over here. So if you want to kind of draw it as you go, maybe to keep it straight, that's kind of cool. So I flipped him over, flipped him over. Where does 1 go? He goes to negative 1. So there it is right there. And then the reason I did that, because 3 turns into negative 3, so I'm kind of back where I started. Maybe I want to flip this point. This is over 2, up 1, so this will be over 2, up 1, just in the other direction. So I end up getting something like this. That's supposed to be a dome. <laughs> Let me try it again. It's supposed to be that nice semicircle there. Oh, well, it's better, but it's not great. So I flipped it around um, the, the y-axis. I'm flipping around this way instead of the x-axis. That's super cool. All right, so let's try another one here. So can I do uh, some kind of dilation with a translation? Sure, I've got this bad boy here and then this bad boy. So I always like to stretch before I move here. So I think of it like warming up for sports or something. 
I'm going to stretch, and then I'm going to move. So let's stretch this bad boy out. So I can see that I've got a scale factor. I'm going to dilate it by three. So all my y values will get three times as big. Luckily, he's at zero. This guy's chilling at negative two, so he's going to go all the way down. Three times as big will take him to negative six. Uh, this guy's at zero. He'll stay there. This guy was at one, so he's going to get three times bigger. He's going to come all the way up here. And then the last one's there. And maybe you want to draw it as you go, but let's let's just see what's happening here. So I've got this stretching it down three times as big, coming back up to this. Then I've got this... Uh, was a semicircle. Now it's kind of this weird looking stretched out semicircle, something like that. So I would draw that in real lightly. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy it. I don't know if you can do this. I got a nice copy and paste feature because why do I want to copy and paste that? Well, I'm going to shift it up one, two spaces. So that is the final one right there. Maybe I should change the color for you. Okay. So I changed it to the black one there. The black one is the final image. So if you want to go back and then kind of erase the, where I slid around, you know, write it real lightly. Then I get rid of all those little points. Just kind of delete those bad boys. Excellent. There it is. So I stretched it by three and then I moved it up two. Whoo, that gets intense. Let's bring the pain on this last one here. Check this monster out. Oh my gosh. It's got everything. I tried to throw almost everything at you. So where are we going to start here? So we always start, I got a little cheat, cheat code down here. We're going to always start with the input, the horizontal starting with order of operations, you always start with your axis. So let's start in this mess. And again, just a quick little thing, it's just easier to think about, I stretch before I move. So I'm gonna stretch it out and then I'm gonna move it. This is gonna be a hot mess, so draw lightly, <laughs> erase stuff, because uh, we're bringing it. So let's stretch it. So this is what, I'm gonna start off with a horizontal dilation of a half, opposite way you think. So I'm gonna shrink it horizontally. So negative three goes to negative one and a half. One goes to, or negative one goes to negative half. He was up here at one, he was at one, I'm sorry, he was at two, he goes to one, he was at three, he goes to one and a half. So let's just start with this guy right here. So there is my shape. Whew, that's supposed to be nice and curved right there. So now, that's great. Now I need to shift that shape, what, left three. So let me grab this guy here. We're gonna shift him left one, two, three. So maybe you wanna put some dots in there. Make sure we're good to go. Um, awesome. So we took care of that. Now what's next? Now I got to do the vertical reflection. Remember, it's in front, so he's vertical. So he's, I'll put vert here. It's a vertical reflection. Okay, so let's do that vertical reflection. So I like this point because he's on the x-axis, so he's going to stay there. But this guy is down there at negative 2, so he'll come up here to positive 2. This guy is on the x-axis. That's cool. This guy was above 1. Looks like he's going to come down below 1. And then this guy here is back on the x-axis. So I'm going to try to draw as best I can. We've got a straight line, straight line. And these are the weird half spots. And then I've got that little dome guy right there. So let's dome him up. Boom. There it is right there. Awesome. So now we've still got one last step. Don't forget we have to, after we flipped it, we have to go ahead and vertically shift it up one. So here we go. Let's take this bad boy, shift him up one, and we should end up there. So I know this one's kind of tricky because of those halves and, and whatnot, but that should where we end up. If you want to go back and erase uh, all the parts we didn't use, you can kind of, I'll leave those dots there, but uh, just kind of show it right lightly, and then there's the final product right there. Awesome. All right, how about algebraically? Can we just do it with crunching numbers? Yeah, it's the same stuff, but it's going to be a little more intense than the last section. So what am I doing here? You're doubling all your Y values, and then you're adding four. So you've got that dilation of two. So really just plug and chug. Let's just put this in. If I want to find the new function, it's going to be twice. What I recommend is brackets. You're bracketing this whole function. So I'm going to put the entire function in there, which is what? X squared minus 3X plus 2. And then you're going to add 4 to the end of that because it's 2 times the function plus 4. And now it's just a cleanup game. Let's just kind of simplify everything here. So in this case, I have to distribute the 2 to everybody. So we're really looking at 2x squared minus 6x plus 4. And then don't forget the plus 4 at the end. And then now we're done. We can kind of just combine like terms here. And we have our final new transformed function. So we're going to throw some dilations in there. So your final answer should be 2x squared minus 6x plus 8. And we're good to go. Awesome. How about this bad boy over here? Now I'm messing with some horizontal stuff. So it actually is just a shift, which we did last time with a little uh, 
vertical compression there of one third. So let's just create our new function here. What is the g of x? So again, it's going to be one third of the whole function. So I'm going to bracket it. Wherever there's wherever x is, I'm going to replace with x plus two. So I'm going to put this bad boy in there. So replace x with x plus two. Luckily, there's only one x in this one. And that's the whole thing is getting this dilation of one third. So the one third's out there. So let's clean this up in two steps just so we can see it all here. So clean up the function first, distribute your six. So we're looking at six x plus 12 plus three or six x plus 15 if you wanna go ahead and do a little cleaning. It's hard not to, it's hard not to just clean it up. Uh, and then we're gonna distribute the one third. So let's go ahead and distribute the one third. So I'm probably gonna do this in one step here. So one third of six is two x. And if I combine 12 and 13 got 15, one third of 15 will give me five. So I kind of skipped one step there, but you can write that down if you want. So algebraically, can we manipulate these transformations? Yes, all day. All right, can I do it numerically now? Sure, so I got this table of values. I want to know what is the g of negative one. When I do this transformation, I've got a vertical dilation of five and a vertical shift of down one. So basically, again, it's really just another plug and chug, but this time I'm actually plugging in the point. What is the g of negative one? Well, that'll be five times the f of what when I put in negative one. So we're just evaluating at a single point what's happening, what's the transformation on this point. So five times f of negative one, where's the f of negative one? We'll use our table of values. Negative one makes 12, so this will be five times 12 minus one. And then really we can just go straight to the answer here, the g of negative one. When I put negative one into my new function, uh, 5 times 12 is 60, minus 1, 59. All right, let's come over here and do the same thing, but this one's got a lot of horizontal action in there. Don't freak out. We're just evaluating at this point. So my new function is going to be the g of x. I'm going to put 2 in for x and do the same thing here. So I do have this crazy function going on. This is the f of, and don't freak out. You've got a, um, a horizontal shift of right 1, and then you've got this compression of 1 third here. So you're doing both. You're moving at right 1, Compressing by a third. When that's all done, then you're going to add 2 to it. So just plug and chug. Just follow the order of operations. X is 2, so I'm going to put 2 in for X. And then we'll just kind of clean up those parentheses and, and work from there. So uh, what's going to happen here? We've got the F of 3 times 2. Can we do this? 2 minus 1 is just 1 times that by 3. We're really just talking about the F of 3 is all that is. And really, that's not bad at all. That's pretty, It worked out well. It looked weird. But when I plug 3 in, what comes out? 8. I'm going to do the 8, so that'll be right there. 8 plus 2 will give me my final answer here of what the g of 2 makes 10. So it looked crazy, but not too bad. If you just kind of plug and chug, work your way through it, you should be good to go. Nice. All right, the finale here, domain and range. And this, this can get tricky. Again, when we're talking about domain, we're talking about the x's. So these are my x's. The range is the y's, these are my y's. So think of, I like to write them separately, like, so I know, hey, this is my domain, this is my input, I'm only talking about x values, because it gets kind of weird. So um, what's happening to my domain? So this is what's happening. How about this? This is a great example. Is anything happening to my domain, my input? Is anything going on horizontally? No, there's nothing going on, there's nothing happening here. So really my domain stays, there's been nothing transformed to it. But how about my range? He looks like he's getting some action. There's the range. And the range is what? It started off with 4, 9. Is there any transformations going on in the y direction? Sure, that's everything on the outside. So I've got this vertical. Let's start there. I always stretch before I move. So let's stretch it out. This is a vertical dilation of 3. So what happens here? I'll put that over here. I'm going to go vertical. Ah. Dilation just so I know what's happening. Vertically dilate with a factor of three. So they'll get three times bigger. So the, all those four will turn into 12 and nine will turn into 27. They get three times bigger. Awesome, then I look at the next part. What is going on here? We've got a vertical shift. We are going to shift it vertically, shift up two. And then whatever you write down, so it really helps to write out, actually do that to your range. So my range gets shifted up two. So 12 will turn into 14, and 27 will turn into 29. So I like to write it out, what's happening, and then just do it. So my y values changed a bunch. Notice my domain didn't change at all because there's nothing happening horizontally. That's it right there, man. Good luck on the practice and on the mastery check. Peace.
Peace out.